Warning, this video will contain footage of deadly spiders uh, eating other critters and doing nasty things as they always do. And before we kick off in this episode, I'd just like to take you forward to week 12. I didn't want to show this footage, but I want to uh, put some of these people who are attacking me and sending me death threats back in their box. Now, I've got a question why these people even watch the video, because the title of the video has a warning. There is an audible warning and a title warning in the video, yet they continue through to see things that disturbs them. So if they're coming along and having a go at me about being distressed about what they've seen, well, they've actually gone past a number of warnings to stop them from getting there. I think it starts to reveal the IQ of these people, and I'm actually starting to think I'm dealing with a very different style of YouTube troll that I haven't really seen on my channel. I've had different styles of trolls, but these ones who like to come in and say they've been distressed of what they've seen are going to a new low level. Anyway, up at week 12, I stumble across a redback spider that has decided to live under one of my bins at home, and lo and behold, uh, guess who's caught up in this web? There is a large skink, and the skink is going to be eaten by the redback spider. So there you go. It happens in real life. Uh, redback spiders can naturally catch these skinks. And that's going to be an eye opener for the horrid hate trolls that I seem to have collected. So forward we move on and this is week 6, the time lapse edition. And I do the time lapse edition because it reveals uh, many of the secrets of the spiders in the way they work, the way they kill and the way other things in the tank interact with the spiders. This is also a very special time because somewhere in the tank here is the amazing Gonzo. Gonzo was that strange critter that looked like Gonzo from the Muppets and it had a very special uh, knack of looking like a rock and then all of a sudden bursting out its wings and doing amazing things. I think it's one of the most endearing little things that I've ever found. But as we've learned, being attached emotionally to anything that enters the spider tank is always going to bring you uh, tears. The spiders are expert killers. Uh, one skink, as you can see, is dead there, and it really got caught up in the web uh, via its tail. I think maybe the tail is the big disadvantage of these skinks. I'm pretty sure the skinks uh, would eat the spiderlings, and they were actually put in there because I was pretty certain that the spider egg sacs were about to open, but I got my timing a little bit wrong. And that's a reminder, yes, I do make mistakes, and uh, yes, I'm not fully aware of the time scales that are involved when the spider egg sacs open. The female redback spiders will lay a number of egg sacs, maybe four or five, and within each egg sac could be anywhere between 50 to 250 uh, baby spiderlings. The number is highly variable, and so is the time when the egg sacs open. In this spider tank, there's a form of uh, forced social activity. I don't think these spiders really enjoy being that close to each other. And I know that because a uh, redback spider will eat redback spider. There seems to be a territory set up. Mind you, I could argue the other case, and I do see almost a cooperation uh, between the spiders, especially when there's a major threat uh, that enters a tank. I, I almost see them uh, ganging up against the thing they want to kill, and it actually gets very scary uh, when you see that. One thing I'll say about the skinks is what I did notice was the redback spiders didn't uh, jump on them and take them out uh, really fast. In fact, they were living in there for quite some time. Of course, the second skink uh, lived on longer than the first one. And what I've noticed with the redback spiders, and especially because I can see way into the future uh, past this upload, is that if the redback spiders have uh, what is deemed to be a threat to them anywhere near them, they will often try to keep their distance away from that critter. Uh, without telling you too much of what goes on in the future, there are things that the redback spiders will really be careful with and really avoid uh, making any sort of contact with. The redback spider will make a move uh, once it feels it can overpower an opponent, and sometimes it's a matter of waiting for the right time. Again, because I can see into the future, these killer spiders, uh, when they have an advantage, uh, they will often take that advantage right up to the kill. And the skink that's in the tank here uh, is moving around a lot, and it's only a matter of time before it will make the wrong move and get caught in the web in a way where the redback spider can take advantage of it. In the way I've seen the redback spider operate, it's a little bit like watching two great tennis champions who are very evenly matched. Uh, so often the match will be won uh, by the person who wins picking off the weakness of the opponent, and that's what I've seen uh, happen with the Redback Spider. If it's going to get a win, 
it'll just wait for the right time when the weakness of the opponent has started to reveal and it's prepared to wait often for long periods of time before that appears. So this spider tank is a very busy zone. Uh, definitely the redback spiders have total control of what's going on in here. Uh, lots of egg sacs to be managed and quite often you'll see the female redbacks moving the egg sacs around inside the tank. They seem to find little comfort zones for them. But they also set up a peculiar style of web uh, near the egg sacs. And I noticed that out in the garden as well. It's a bit like a cocoon area is the best way I could say it. Um, but in the end, uh, the action is about to start and the skink in there who's alive is about to get into all sorts of dangerous peril. And, well, you know, you make one mistake in this tank and it tends to be your death sentence. One thing about the skinks in the spider tank, they are always moving about, always curious about things, climbing the glass with these. And you've seen that in this video. Uh, but sooner or later, if all the spider web up, you're going to fall into peril, and I think the second skink uh, starts to get caught in the web via its tail, and then the spider starts to do the classic sticky web out the back, flinging out web via its back feet, and when it gets a chance, I'm pretty sure it gets bites in. The time-lapse footage starts to make things happen a little bit too fast, and I'll try to go over some of this stuff and slow it up, and you'll see what's going on, hopefully, especially when there's a few bites laid in. So the female redback spider will be doing its best spidery things to get bites into the skink and getting venom in. And the spider will always respect that skink because it's got a pretty powerful bite. And if the skink gets a bite into the right spot, well, the redback spider may lose a vital leg. Because I've seen the other skink pass away in this tank via a redback bite, it does take a long time for the skink to pass away. And there was only a couple of people that made the query about this and asked, well, why does it happen like this? I think that's a very good question to ask. And again, with the second skink, it takes a long time for the skink to pass away. In fact, even I'm surprised at how much fight the skink can put up. So there's something about the skink uh, versus the venom, which other critters have not been able to display. The skink seems to be able to fight on and breathe for a very long time, mind you. I can see that its back legs get paralyzed because the bites are getting put into the tail. It seems to affect the rear of the skink, while the front of the skink uh, seems to fight on. Well, this real-life horror story uh, would make the spider fans very happy, but I know the skink fans uh, were getting very tense. And if I said to them it took a couple of days for the skink to pass away, they're even going to tense up further. I think some people expect uh, me to cut up uh, food for the redback spiders and deliver this food to the spiders already dead and on a silver platter. I highly suspect that uh, spiders like this uh, actually enjoy live food, capturing things which are alive. As humans, we seem to have disconnected uh, from the idea of capturing something that's alive and eating it. We seem to be far more comfortable in eating things that are dead. And also remember, seeing this uh, would be something you would normally never see. Uh, these spiders are nocturnal spiders, they are very reclusive spiders, and I personally I've never seen this before, so for me, it's a revelation. I'm actually learning lots about the redback spider in the way it works. Uh, quite a remarkable spider. And this female redback spider is showing the classic signs that females are good at, and that is multitasking. Apart from dealing with the skink and taking control over it, there's also the egg sacs to manage and the spider will go between the egg sacs to the skink and I do believe that the cluster of egg sacs there is actually derived from two spiders because I did witness a group of egg sacs uh, being transferred from one side of the tank over to this side where the spiders seem to enjoy keeping the egg sacs. Mind you, most of the time I only ever see one redback spider looking after all the egg sacs there. But there are moments and times when I will see multiple redback spiders in that zone. And that's been one of the curiosities of this tank. Uh, sometimes I see these spiders being very fiercely independent. And then there are moments when they seem to work together. Now the skink is a very large meal. And I do wonder if this footage has revealed, is it a meal for multiple spiders? I've got a sneaky suspicion that really one spider dominates over this meal uh, versus all the other spiders in the tank. Apart from the spider turning a skink into a meal, there is another spider to keep an eye on in this spider tank, and it's shedding its skin, and it just looks so creepy. It's like something from the Aliens films. And I'm sure my voice gets horribly boring after a while, and it might be quite fitting to put some sort of horror music over the visuals that the time-lapse camera has captured at week 6.